May 25th, 2021. The National Guard deployed to secure the U.S. Capitol in the wake of the January 6th attack by a pro-Trump mob will end its mission there Wednesday, the Pentagon has confirmed. The troops began arriving at the Capitol hours after Trump supporters breached the Capitol building while Congress was certifying the election of President Biden. The number of troops at one point peaked at 26,000, representing all 50 states, three territories, and the District of Columbia. Their strength has been gradually reduced and roughly 1,600 members remain at the complex, where the U.S. Senate and House of Representatives meet and have office space. Israel decided to reopen its crossing with Gaza on Tuesday to allow fuel and humanitarian aid to enter the coastal enclave for the first time in more than two weeks. All crossings between Israel and the Gaza Strip were completely shut down two weeks ago when Hamas launched rockets at Jerusalem and initiated 11 days of fighting. Secretary of State Antony Blinken was dispatched to the Middle East by President Biden on Monday to kickstart peace talks between Israel and Palestine. After meeting with Netanyahu, Blinken will travel to Ramallah to meet with Palestinian Authority President Muhammad Abbas. To support urgent humanitarian and reconstruction assistance for Gaza, to benefit the Palestinian people, and to continue to rebuild our relationship with the Palestinian people and the Palestinian Authority. Intense uh, behind-the-scenes uh, diplomacy led by President Biden, working very closely with, um, with the Prime Minister, helped produce last week's ceasefire. Now we believe we must uh, build on it. That starts with the recognition that uh, losses on both sides uh, were profound. If Hamas breaks the calm and attacks Israel, our response will be very powerful. And we have uh, discussed ways of how to work together to prevent Hamas uh, rearmament uh, with the weapons uh, and means of uh, aggression. We need to work together to expand normalization between Israel and uh, Arab and the Muslim world and deepen the peace treaties that we already have. Uh, we discussed also how to uh, improve the lives and the conditions of the Palestinians, the humanitarian conditions in Gaza. European leaders on Monday agree to significantly toughen sanctions on Belarus and Chabar European Union Airlines from flying over the country's airspace, dealing a potentially crushing blow to their economy. A day after Belarusian authorities forced down a civilian jet and pulled off a dissident journalist, the measures, backed by all 27 EU leaders, were an unusually fast and powerful response to the brazen move by Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko. The immediate issue before us is the appalling, reckless and unacceptable uh, activity by the Belarusian government yesterday uh, enforcing down a Ryanair uh, plane uh, and the um, arrest of Raman uh, Protasevich. Uh, we call for his immediate release. Uh, we believe this action uh, is contrary uh, to all principles of democracy, freedom of association, uh, free speech. Uh, and also endangered uh, European citizens and the crew on that aeroplane and its behaviour that's not acceptable. Um, and many leaders uh, this evening will be discussing this and we from an Irish perspective will be calling for a very firm and strong response uh, to this action. Several people were killed in a shooting on Monday outside Columbus, Ohio, according to local news reports. The shooting happened in West Jefferson, Ohio, a village of some 4,000 people about 20 miles west of the state's capital city. The authorities told the Columbus Dispatch that they found the victim's bodies inside and outside of a duplex residence. And we are asking that if anyone has information, was at that park, uh, saw anything, recorded anything on their, telephone, on their cell phones, is to provide that information to the Columbus police. A man has been arrested after calling a police department and threatening to kill a police officer before attempting to run over several cops and driving his car through the station's lobby. The incident occurred at approximately 9.34 p.m. in Maryland, about 40 miles northeast of Baltimore, when the suspect, 24-year-old Timothy Call, placed a call to the police department and told authorities he was going to come there and kill them. 
a suspect wanted for a gang-style assault of a Jewish man in New York City last week has been arrested. Police say 25-year-old Fazil Alezi of Staten Island was one of at least five men who participated in the anti-Semitic attack. The attack happened amid demonstrations that brought out both pro-Israeli and pro-Palestinian supporters to Midtown Manhattan. Alezi was charged with an assault as a hate crime, menacing as a hate crime, and aggravated harassment as a hate crime. Anti-Semitism has been growing in recent years around the world. We have to stop it. And if one place it needs to be stopped once and for all, it's right here in New York City, and we will do that.